Hi everyone, welcome to this car chase tutorial. My name is Alex, and this is a time lapse of my process to get to this final animation. I'll do my best to describe what I'm doing and thinking at each step. Here, I just brought in a set from Sketchfab, and I played with a couple options. I landed on this set. And so really what I'm doing now is looking at the relationship of the set to my car, making sure that scale is good. The first thing I do once I pick an environment is just have a look around, see what's interesting about that environment. And in this case, I liked it, but it wasn't long enough. So all I did is duplicated it and gave myself a longer runway to work with. Here, I'm just, again, looking at different angles, seeing what's cool. And quite quickly, I settled on, you can see my mouse, what I was doing, just kind of thinking about the the car animation, what it could do. But I settled on that uh, little alleyway there because I thought it would be cool for the car to fit through there. Uh, here, I'm duplicating a third piece, realizing that maybe the car could come through the alley, go down that straightaway, and then once we're at that straightaway, I don't have enough set. So this is what I'm doing here, just lining it up nice and rough, not being precious about it. Uh, if I was to spend more time at that seam, I would, um, I'd care more about lining it up, but, but I'm not. So don't worry about that too much. Uh, here, I just duplicate parts of the set, move them as I need to, and delete the geo that I don't need that's overlapping. And all I'm doing here is just when the, when the camera sees down this way, I just want some buildings there so I don't see empty screen space. This car rig, by the way, um, there was a blimp in the scene, and I thought I could use it for some framing elements, but I ended up not. But that car rig, if you're interested in how to put a simple car rig together, just like this one, um, I have a tutorial on that. So go check that out. And it's the exact same rig that, I, that you see here. It's simple to set up and powerful. Um, so that's what I'm using here. And um, so with the scaling of the set, the car just fits in that alleyway. And I thought that'd be cool. And it reminded me of two things at this point. Uh, the Italian Job movie um, and uh, Ken Block, his drifting video. So those are the two inspirations of this tight set with this car. All I'm doing now is filling in parts of that element, parts of, pardon me, parts of that set that are empty. Just duplicating Geo as I need not being precious about anything. Um, when the camera's moving and action's moving, you're not really gonna see any imperfections if things aren't lined up, if maybe I stretch some of the geo just to make things work. So, um, yeah, I'm just worried about what we see in the camera, ultimately. Here I'm just duplicating some sets, some of those crates, and just doing a bit of set dressing. Uh, when I saw those, I thought I could use them to crash or to interact with. And so I ended up doing that, and I thought that worked well. Here I made my camera, and with the camera, what I like to do is here, you can see my animation workspace. On the left side of the screen uh, is my work window. On the right side is where I view the camera. In the camera viewport, I like to see nothing except the geometry, except what I'm filming. Um, and here, what I'm doing now is just finding framing elements. So the first thing, once you bring the set in, is staging. The relationship of things to one another. Once I had that, I was happy with it, and I had a bit of an idea of what the car could do. Now I move on to framing. And all you see, all I'm doing here is playing with, does it look good from this side, this side, up, down? I'm just coming up with different framing elements. Um, and I spend quite a bit of time, and as I'm doing the framing, I'm also thinking about the action of the car. Okay, maybe the car comes this way, and if that happens, maybe I can film it from here, here, here. Uh, I'm already starting to think about the line of action. Uh, on this particular um, scene that you see here, I also duplicated my timeline, and, um, and so that way when I go in and out of my three panel window into my big panel, I still have the, the timeline there. I can scrub. I can still affect my keys, and I found that to be quite useful. Uh, another thing that I think is really handy is your scene when you first start up is 250 frames. Just 
bring it down, you can see here I'm at 57 frames. I'm just working in chunks at a time. I have a bigger picture in my head. This particular uh, scene ended up being four shots. And so I can think ahead a little bit, but I can't think ahead all the way to the end. I can think uh, the car can start here and maybe go through that back alley, and I know it's going to go down the straightaway. That's as far as I can think at this point ahead. Um, and I don't worry about what's happening later on. So I'm doing a little bit of the blocking of the car, not being too precious about it, just setting keys. And one of the big things I think that uh, if you've tried a car animation um, that you'll notice here is I'm not using a curve. I'm not constraining my car to a curve and the camera to that curve. Um, most times I don't. I do sometimes. And, uh, but most times I don't. And the reason for that is um, it is a little slower, I'll admit that, but I think it allows for more organic feel because when you constrain uh, the car to a curve, I think you're a little more rigid just in your thinking. And then when you constrain your camera to that curve, you're definitely more rigid. Um, and unless you're really good, I could tell that it's constrained. Here it's not constrained. Everything is moving together, but it's not constrained. Um, so all I'm doing here is just blocking that, that car animation. I think the easiest way to think about it is point A, point B, and then I might add one or two breakdown keys. The breakdowns just help to define the path of the car. And one of the big things here is while I'm blocking it, especially at the beginning of the blocking stage for this one shot, um, is I just look at the movement, the speed. Is it moving correctly? And I won't move past that until it is. And then I'll start adding some detail. Like I said, some of the breakdown. Just fitting it in. And you can see here it's crashing. So what I'm going to do is just that, that move right there is an in-between pose. Um, so you can see what do I have. I have uh, seven keys on my timeline right now. Uh, and it's describing that whole movement. And as I can describe the movement, now I can film it more accurately. And so one of the reasons too with this car rig, um, why I like this particular rig as opposed to as opposed to an armature rig, is I don't have to go in and out of the armature and then go back to the camera, affect my framing, go back to the car, change some element of it. I'm always in this object mode, um, affecting the car and the camera at the same time. I find that valuable. And, you know, just working my way through the different elements of the rig, adding some of the drift elements here. Um, as you go along, you just add a little more detail. I'm still on that first shot. I don't even think I've really picked my framing yet. I'm just looking at really three ideas. It was that beginning, it was that middle, how we go down that section, and then I know I want a, a shot coming through the alleyway. So here we go. Here's my first uh, framing and I know I want a low shot and I thought it'd be cool as the car enters frame and drifts past us that the camera also moves in that direction and what I'm doing here is I just have my camera and I created an empty and then I constrain that camera to that empty the empty uh, serves as a pivot and it's generally around the car and all I'm going to do is take that pivot and rotate orbit essentially I really like those moves um, I'm a big fan of two kinds of moves. It's orbits and straight lines. And so I do a combination of those two a lot of the times. Um, cool, so all I'm doing now is, now that I've described my action of the car, I can film it a little more accurately. And so I'm working that back and forth. Um, here I'm starting to think about my second shot. And so I'm really just playing. Here I had the first shot was a low shot, second shot, high shot. That contrast is nice. Um, and then I'm just following along, following that action. One important thing as well to think about is the line of action. Here in this first shot, when the car leaves, it's pointing screen right. When I pick it up in the second shot, it's still pointing screen right. That's important just to help the viewer. There's going to be a lot of action, a lot of movement, and we want to do... We want that intensity, but we also want the clarity as well. Cool, so now I'm thinking about my third shot here. 
And one of the things that when I was doing it, uh, you can see in that in that top down shot, that's my second shot. Um, here you can see it was as we're finishing, we're on the left side of the car. So we'll in, in, the, in that third shot, I also want to barely be on the left side, just a little bit. You can see how the car pops there. Already I'm starting to distinguish between my shot one, two, and three. And I don't mind that it's popping because when I pop, in this case, all I'm doing is over one frame going from shot one to shot two, shot two to shot three. It's always over one frame for me. I don't work with multiple cameras. I like working with one camera and over one frame, I cut to the next shot. And over that one frame, I'll also uh, just adjust elements of my animation or posing. Here, I'm starting to think about my third shot. I know the car's coming through the alley and just thinking, okay, this is a cool framing, nice and symmetrical, and maybe I'll just do a pullback as well. So just playing with that idea as it's just playing. Um, I really like the alleyway too. When I saw the crates there, I thought that was cool. Here I'm starting to add more detail as the car takes that turn, drifts into that turn. Uh, it goes up on a little bit of a sidewalk. So just adding that detail now as I'm layering some of, the, some of that detail. Just playing with the keys. Um, I use the timeline a lot, and the graph editor. Probably about 50-50. And then here you can see adding a little more, more detail in the first shot as we're drifting in, coming off the, the sidewalk onto the road, just dips down a little bit. Here, adding more detail now, we're crashing through those barrels. And um, really what I did there is all that geometry, all those six, seven barrels were all one. You can tab into edit mode, select the geo you want, hit P to separate, and now I can animate an individual barrel. And I just animate the geo. Cool, so it's starting to come together. I think this was around the time um, when I called it a day or a night for the first day. I spent, I think about a total, total of about eight hours on uh, this test for that first night and then uh, the next morning as well I finished it up. Cool, just playing with the barrels, having fun there. Uh, here, um, we're skipping ahead a little bit now to the third shot, but further down the third shot. So, oh no, pardon me, this is the fourth shot. And so the first shot is that, that, that first drift, second shot, the top down, third shot going through the alleyway. We exit screen right, fourth shot is this one here. This one is the big one and it's the last shot. And really how I set this one up is um, it's the camera, uh, pardon me, it's the car and the camera, and we're just moving in a straight line. And all I'm doing at the beginning of that is finding that speed. And I won't move past that until I'm happy with the speed. And then I'll start layering some additional um, detail, this orbit around the car. Um, and as I was doing that, I'm playing with the FOB because I'm really, I'm backed up and I come into the car and then I orbit around the car, but I'm physically too close to it. So I FOV out there. I think I was going from about a 42 lens down to a 17, back up to, I think a 24. Um, and so, like I said earlier, I work in chunks. So I think broadly, but only up to a certain point. I can't think too far in advance. I can think, okay, I know I want to take this turn, go through the alleyway and go down that straightaway. After that, I have an idea I want to go around the corner, but I can't think too much in the detail. And so what you can see here is me finishing that last part. And all I'm doing is being very broad at this point. I finish that straightaway line. Now I have to go into the, the, the S turn. And all I'm, all I'm doing here is grabbing the camera and the car and going from that last point right there to point B, point A to point B. And you can see I'm just crashing through the buildings. I don't mind. Really what I'm thinking about here is am I matching the speed? And so the speed's really important. And I'll just keep working on that until I'm happy with the speed. Because after that, after I have my two points, I'll just add a couple more breakdowns and define that curve. And that's all I'm doing here. I'm, 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 I'm again going from point A to point B, point B, being very broad about it. Um, 
being aggressive, basically. I'm not worried about detail. I need the car to be from here to here. And so I just, I do that. Um, and then once I do that, uh, then it's about timing. And then I'll add some of the detail after that. Here you can see how this kind of looks. And again, I know um, if you used animation, or pardon me, if you've animated on a curve, um, this is going to look really strange to you. And it's, it is a bit more of a difficult workflow. But I think it allows, like I said, more, um, less, rigid, less rigidity um, because the camera and the car are not constrained to curve. Um, and so what I'm doing here is just playing with different lighting setups. At this point, I'm close to the end. And um, this is all just EV, but it's, it's not even rendered. It was just play blasted from the, from the viewport. This was a play blast from the viewport, and I'm, I'm really excited with the quality of it. Um, I tried cycles on this test. It didn't look as good. There were some elements, like some of the reflections on the, from the puddles, uh, that looked better. But um, I'm liking this look a little better that I got from Eevee. Um, awesome. There you go. I'll leave it here for you guys, and I'll leave, um, I'll leave you. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, if you like the video, please, uh, please like it so I know that you like this content. And uh, thanks, everybody. I'll leave you with the final audio as well. Bye-bye.